And it is uh, 25 minutes till the hour here in the Amherst Morning Program. Please welcome to the program uh, one of our favorite people, Senator John McCain from the great state of Arizona. Good morning, Senator McCain. Uh, good morning, Donald. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your continued efforts on behalf of the brave young men and women and uh, helping, welcoming, bringing them home and, uh, and healing the wounds of war. Uh, we are very grateful that you are here, including Deirdre, Deirdre and the... Uh, and the whole gang. And I'm sorry, Charles is not feeling well. I get well soon. Charles, come to the hospital. Charles, we'll take care of you here. Yes, it would be a good place for him. By the way, so, I was up in Kingman, uh, Arizona recently. Uh, your name is still on the police blotter there. They well, remember you, you with, uh, with affection. My uncle, Elmer Imus, used to be the chief of police at Kingman. And he and my dad, when they were, could take time off from getting drunk, just said it would be amusing when I was about 13 or 14 to put me in jail there for... A day with a bunch of Navajos who had been arrested for something as well. So that, that has been an enlightening experience for a young man. So a number of years ago, uh, <laughs> you asked me on the air if I'd come with you to Walter Reed Hospital, and so Charles and Bernie and I did, and it was one of the more uh, oh, it's an experience I'll never forget in my lifetime. And I, I was particularly uh, struck by uh, how it was clear that uh, you'd been there many times. And uh, then I got involved with, uh, because of Richard Santilli and Bill White, in raising money for this intrepid center down at Brook Army Medical Center, San Antonio. And my question is, how do you feel uh, about the fact that this facility, the one there raised, was built solely with public funds? I think it's incredible. I think it's a, a, a wonderful example of what America is all about. Um, and certainly there's a need. Do you know we're having a serious situation with suicides in the armed forces? We just had a hearing yesterday in the Armed Services Committee. This war, this, this year or something? Yeah. There's going to be a lot tougher time in Afghanistan before it gets better. Next few months are going to be very tough. Traumatic brain injury, PTSD, and what you're supporting and what you're doing is very, very badly needed. And, of course, we want to thank the Fisher family for all of their involvement as well in the intrepid uh, Fallen Heroes Fund. So there's a lot to be done, and what you and the Fisher family and others are doing is inspiring other Americans to express their support and their affection and appreciation for these young Americans. And I thank you for coming. It's not easy to come all the way down from New York, set up your operation here, and it's a something of an inconvenience. But fortunately, Deirdre is here to keep you straight. I'm I actually glad. came from the ranch. That's right. In fact, we're going back right. to the ranch right as soon as this is over. We have more kids. There's a soldier I want you to meet before you go. Good. Uh, Captain uh, Adrian Beth uh, Nelson, who suffers traumatic brain injury. That's uh, But is a spokesman for this facility and for the Army and for these soldiers. And he's one of the more remarkable, and his wife too, two of the more remarkable uh, people I've ever met. And, and in, in, in his ability, even though he suffers himself, to articulate what what exactly, because as they describe it, it's the invisible malady. I mean, it. Uh, I, look, I, as you mentioned, I go out. Uh, I was out last week uh, out at Walter Reed, and um, you're inspired and humbled, and so grateful that we have such people serving. And again, it's going to get tougher in the next couple of months as we move into Kandahar, and so. This is needed more than ever, this kind of help and assistance. So thank you for doing it, Don. I well, you're appreciate welcome. it very much. Uh, 21 Till the Hour, talking with Senator John McCain, uh, here broadcasting live from the National Intrepid Center of Excellence in Bethesda, Maryland. They're having a big ribbon-cutting ceremony a little later this morning. Uh, President accepted General McChrystal's uh, resignation yesterday. Mm -hmm. It was the right thing to do. And the, uh, the I don't, you, you wonder why how that all transpired with a reporter from Rolling Stone, but the fact is it is what it is, and we have to uh, affirm the civilian control of the military, and that's it. that's that. I'm glad that General Petraeus is going to be there, but I'm deeply concerned about the president's continued adherence to a, quote, date certain that we're going to leave no matter what the conditions on the ground are. Now, General Petraeus will argue that, and I'm... I, was with him yesterday for quite a period of time that he will judge it on the conditions on the ground. But in Alter's book, uh, Vice President Biden says, 
uh, where a whole lot of people are coming out the middle of uh, 2011, you can bet on it. Well, that's not the signal you send to the enemy. You don't send the signal to the enemy that you're leaving on a date certain. Then, then the enemy accommodates and your friends accommodate, like Karzai and others, if they think we're not going to be there. Biden's so, a, a nice guy, but he's a little... Well, not, the, uh, not going to the Mensa picnic, is he? Well, I, look, I have a great respect for the vice president, but he was wrong about Iraq. He wanted to divide Iraq into three different countries, which was just foolish, and uh, he was wrong about it. The president was wrong about Iraq. The secretary of state was wrong about Iraq. The national security advisor was wrong about Iraq. They said the surge wouldn't work, and they said we were doomed to failure. Uh, they've got to understand that um, uh, war is a tough business, and we can't afford to allow Afghanistan to return to a base for attacks on the United States of America, but we should have to show that we're going to do what's necessary and not set an artificial date, which the president has said in order, frankly, to pacify the left base of his party. Uh, Senator John McCain here on the Amazon morning, morning program. Myself. <laughs> did you read the Rolling Stone article? Yes. Yeah, okay. I read it. So what What did any of uh, McChrystal's aides say that wasn't true? Well, I think you've got to be respectful. You can't make a comment like that about the Vice President of the United States. Why? I, have a, I just don't... Well, you mean as part of the military? Yeah, I, I get that. Yeah, and of course that the uh, that it's you've got to be respectful, and you can't if you if you disagree with policy, you have to resign and leave. Oh, okay. But it, it just is not the kind of attitude or behavior that frankly that we expect of men and women in the military, and I'm sure that. We can excuse unguarded moments, uh, the, you know, all the, all the things, and I'm sure that I've, I may have said things at, uh, <laughs> at a cultural establishment where liquid refreshments are served oh, you've said in my time. Over your uh, life, you've said horrible stuff. What are you kidding? Uh, uh, yeah, and, uh, and even as a member of the of military. Course, so have I. But, <laughs> <laughs> but these people, uh, but, you know, it, it just can't be... Uh, allowed to without r response um, the gen we go back to general uh, president truman hiring uh, firing uh, MacArthur. general macarthur and that was a far more serious issue but the fact is that we have a system of government and general mccrystal who i talked to realizes that serious mistakes were were made there. Well, this plan. I respect they, him. Uh, I honor his service to the country, and I wish him well. This uh, plan they have, this thing they call COIN, this counterinsurgency thing, doesn't. I mean, I, I played the bugle in the Marine Corps, as you know. So yes. I, by the way, had 13 office hours when I was in a, which is the preliminary, as you know, the court martial, mm -hmm. because I was always wising off to some sergeant or something. Which I, I never did that myself. Well, no, um, of course not. I didn't have. I didn't have the most demerits of anybody who ever went to the Naval <laughs> Academy, but I'm sure I w ended up in the top ten. But uh, my question is, is this a good plan? Because it doesn't sound like it. Yeah. It, we, it's, well, how is it a good as plan? As long as we can get the, the right uh, civilian team in there. There's great dis the, right now, there's great disconnect between the civilian side, the embassy, uh, Ambassador Holbrook. There, there's got to be changes besides just General Petraeus. But the counterinsurgency adopted from Iraq to Afghanistan, because they're very dramatically different. You go into places, you clear it, you hold it, you have uh, your forces operating with the people, and you gradually expand that control and give them good government. Yes, it's different. Yes, there's tremendous corruption. There is difficulties with ethnic differences. But look at Iraq at the time we started the insurgency. Far worse than Afghanistan is today. And these are huge problems, and it takes time, but we can succeed. But if you say, hey, by the way, we're going to do all this, but starting next year, we're on our way out, that, that it dooms it to failure. And that's what I worry about more than anything else. And by the way, the men and women who are serving over there, as you know, and you meet them here, they're the best we've ever had. They're the, by far the best. You and I were you know, served time in the military. It was very, very different. Outfit. Either. Well, I wouldn't compare my service, playing a bugle and ring corps, to your service. Are you I crazy? Would, I would compare I mean, anyone who served their country with mine. Well, I, w I was in a 105 howitzer outfit, but I, I didn't like that because they made you go out in the field. And I didn't want to do that. 
Well, I can't say I blame you, but you did. No. Uh, so anyway, I, I, uh, I'm worried about the steadfastness of our commitment more than anything else, because if they think we're not going to be there, they accommodate, and it leads to all kinds of problems. And if we fail in Afghanistan, it'll reverberate uh, around the world. Well, it's according to the article, Senator John McCain, here in the Irish morning program, I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, I did not mean to no, interrupt. Not at all. I apologize for it. Uh, not at all. I'm uh, very happy to see you again, and you're looking very well, and Deirdre is more beautiful than ever, and I watched her on Hannity a few times. She does a very good job. I had Glenn Beck on. Uh, thank you. I had Glenn Beck on the other day. Oh, as you know, it's insane. Mm -hmm. But I, I, he's a friend of mine. I like him. But I, uh, whether I agree with him or not, it's irrelevant. But I used the word hacienda because uh, I was broadcasting from the ranch where I'm going back today because we have kids tomorrow. And uh, he threatened to ask me for my papers. And I explained to him I was in New Mexico, not Arizona. Now the president says he's going to sue. Uh, the administration says he's going to sue for this. Yeah. What's, what's your view of all that? Well, my view is it's ludicrous because he says that he is suing because it's a federal responsibility to implement immigration laws when the fact is the reason why the state of Arizona acted is because our border is insecure and they didn't carry out their responsibilities. You see that um, yesterday the mayor, uh, the police chief in Nogales, Arizona, where you have visited, said that the drug cartels have said they're going to kill his policemen. The, the violence on the border oh, no, is, is incredible. In, in the southern part of our state, f uh, south of the interstate, the federal government, the parks and BLM people have put up warning signs, warning signs. You are uh, human smuggling and uh, the drug drug smuggling area. The deputy head of the of the Border Patrol has said it's like a third world country. Well, people in my state don't deserve to be a third world country. They deserve to have the border secured, and we can do it. John Kyle and I have a 10-point plan. Surveillance, people, and fences, and you can do it. And right now, these drug cartels and human smugglers are moving, working together. In the, in the, the most cruel and inhumane people, it, it's unimaginable. And there's no reason why on God's green earth why the city of Phoenix should be the number two kidnap capital of the world. Wow. Mexico City being number one. And it's a distribution center now all over the country for illegal immigrants and drugs. So all I can say is that if the president and the, and, and, uh, and the attorney general and the secretary of Homeland Security would spend more time trying to help us secure the border than they are about uh, about figuring out ways that they want to sue the state of Arizona. The country in Arizona would be a lot better off. You're going to win this primary battle? We'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll, well be fun. Fine. Doesn't know. Are you going to win it? I don't yes. care if it's oh, sure. fun or not. Sure. So yeah. The fun's yeah. going to the beach. I, mean. <laughs> I said we'll be fine. Oh, but I, but well I, am, I am having fun because I enjoy campaigning. You know. I mean, I. Well, I want you to win. Thank you. After I lost last time, um, I slept like a baby. Sleep two hours, wake up and cry. Sleep two uh, hours. By wake the way, up and cry. Uh, Senator, thank you for your service to this country. Thank so. you, my friend, and I'm so honored. Uh, uh, got a boy that's, by the way, that's about to get out of the Marine Corps, Lance Corporal, and one who is in pilot training, uh, horror of horrors, at an Air Force base. But we're getting over that, <laughs> and they're all doing fine. Nice to see you. Thanks, Senator John thank McCain, here on the Army's Marine Program.